we did it. We've teamed up, and together we've created something special. We are the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and we're changing the game. We're covering Idaho high school sports in a way that you haven't seen before. Together, we'll be providing weekly breakdowns and recaps while helping uncover Idaho's top talents at a deeper level. Trust us, you want to be part of this. Boise Sports Talk, EBC Media, and the Game Time Guru bring you Gem Session. Let's get to work. What's up, guys? Welcome out to another episode of Gem Session. My name is Shane Larson, also known as the Game Time Guru. That is my platform, my channel. Uh, but this is the Idaho Underground Sports Network, and this is Gym Session, where we're bringing you guys content on a weekly basis, trying to learn from the sports figures across the valley, across the state of Idaho, talking, you know, chatting it up about the sports world here in the, you know, I guess the high school sports world in the state of Idaho. And each week we're bringing on new guests uh, to the show, and that's what we're going to be doing more and more, especially during basketball season. We w- really wanted to get more guests on the show, and that's what we're that's one of the goals. And so, before we get into this, though, I want to make sure you guys remember to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, share it with any friends or family that might want to catch some of these interviews and just follow the content that we provide here on the platform. But uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But joining me today is Coach Hartman from Middleton High School. We're going to be chatting with him, learning about his program, his team this year, a couple of changes that have happened uh, from last season to this season, and kind of getting to know some of the expectations, learning about some of the the players that we should be watching for for Middleton and what we can expect from them now as they are in 5A. So, uh, Coach Hartman, thanks so much for joining us, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate you a ton. Big fan of the show. Uh, Listeners, definitely subscribe, listen, share. Um, you know, they do, you guys do a great job covering Idaho high school sports. The athletes appreciate it. It's something that 12 years ago, I graduated from Highland high school. Like we didn't have anything, you know, so this is, this is a huge step. Um, the kids love it. It's fun to highlight the kids. That's who it's about. So, uh, really excited to join and talk Middleton. Heck yeah, man. And I always say the same thing, man. I I'm always saying, and sorry, I'm wearing this Hawaii shirt. So it's probably like, Oh dude. So I'm trying to like cover it up on my neck. But, um, I always say the same thing though, coach is like when we, when we were in high school, there were yep. some, there's some, there were some avenues to get information obviously. Uh, right. but it's fun. Like now that social media is kind of a thing. It wasn't that way when I was in high school, we didn't really have social media at all. Now that we have it, we want to utilize it the best that we possibly can. So we're trying to use those platforms, to make it fun for the kids. So, you know, coach, you're going into your second year as head coach at Middleton. Yep. And I, I always wanted to ask you this question, even last year. I mean, you were coming in to fill some shoes. Andy Harrington had left after winning a state championship at Middleton. And it's a tough, tough ask because that doesn't happen at Middleton very often. Uh, Andy heads over to Owyhee High School, uh, which was, I mean, last year you guys were still 4A. So he heads up to the 5A level last year, wins the state championship there. But you're taking over a Middleton program that was still pretty tenured, uh, had some good players on there. Um, well, I should say tenured in the sense of they were experienced. Uh, they were kind of young actually, but yeah. took them over and you guys had what was an 18 game winning streak at one point last year. You guys did a really good job. Uh, I mean, ended up having, you got upset in the district cha- or was it the district championship game against Valley yeah. View. I can't remember. No, yeah. Yeah. The semifinals Valley View. Yeah, they did. They came in and they got us. Yep. That was right. Semifinals, but you made your way to state. Um, you got yep. your way over to the state tournament and ended up with a very tough matchup against Hillcrest, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that was a semifinal matchup. Um, yep. Yeah. Isaac Davis, is, he's a tough animal, man, to, to deal with. And so now we're looking at this year. So, as you know, Nate, when you were coming in to fill the shoes of Andy Harrington, coming off of a state championship um, two years ago, and you're coming into this program that had a lot of returners. Uh, and last year, you're coming in there to, to fill the shoes and, you know, hopefully meet expectations. Talk to us about that experience as a young coach coming in and filling the shoes and how you were uh, able to adjust to that, all that. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, Andy's a friend of mine. I talked to Andy about the job. I talked to, you know, Colby Blaine about the job. I talked to Shelby Lindley about the job. Um, those guys were instrumental in, in having conversations with me and kind of prepping me for what the job was. Um, so I'm, you know, forever grateful for those guys. Um, overall, um, wasn't necessarily concerned about, you know, stepping in and, and filling somebody's shoes. Me as a coach, um, you know, I believe in being authentic and authentic leadership. Um, so I was going to come in and be who I was. If I tried to be somebody else, like it, it just wasn't going to work. Um, and we did have, you know, we had some returners. Obviously, Tyler Medeiros was back. He was up for Gatorade Player of the Year the year before. 
Um, but they had also graduated seven seniors. So like one thing when I got there was, hey, we have some big guys, but we have absolutely no guards. Um, and I'm looking at, you know, I come in, I kind of see the situation and I'm like, man, we have a ton of guards. Um, I feel really good about the situation. We had some big guys. It was a fun group. Um, tough for kids anytime, especially those seniors. You know, you go through a coaching change after winning. Um, so I was just a really appreciative of those kids for jumping on ship, for buying into what we were trying to do. Um, and we did. We came up short. We wanted to win the state championship. But looking back at the overall picture, um, 25 and three, that's the most wins in, in Middleton school history, 25 in a season. We had the longest win streak in Middleton school history at 18 games. Um, you know, Valley View came in and upset us. Mario did a great job. Uh, they got the job done. Um, put us on a different path. Um, but we kind of bought into that. You know, the obstacle becomes the way. We had a longer path. We had to go back through. play. It was like three games in four days. Uh, ended up in a state playing game, you know, in Burley against a, a good Blackfoot team. Went to overtime. Uh, but made it happen, had BK in the first round, um, ended up with Hillcrest. We actually had the lead, you know, Talmadge hit a shot. We took the lead with three minutes and 46 seconds left. Um, but, you know, Hillcrest is a great team and, and they, they ultimately got the best of us. But I felt like, um, you know, kind of looking back year one, I felt like we were, uh, you know, really good team, um, had some great kids and we felt like it was a, a success overall. Totally. I would consider it a success, you know, like 25-3, you shouldn't be complaining about 25 and three. Obviously only one team can win it every single year. That's just yep. the reality of sports. That's, I tell everybody that all the time, you know, like I'm a Buckeyes fan, but I'm very, very aware that it's, it's tough to beat Georgia in the college football playoff, right? Like I'm, I'm very aware of the situation. Like every year though, only one team gets to win it. Yep. It doesn't mean that everybody else, like I hate the mentality of like, if you don't win it, it's complete flop and failure yeah. and underachievement. No, dude, that yeah. you can have a successful year. Uh, just if you, if you don't win a championship, obviously everybody wants to, but it doesn't mean you weren't successful. <laughs> like it's for sure. Hard. For sure. And that's probably the biggest challenge in sports, right? Like one team wins, um, you know, but the lessons obtained, the successes along the way, those are all things that hopefully those kids carry with them uh, when the ball stops bouncing, which is going to happen at some point. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Well, coach going into this year, you guys, you know, this was the discussion point, like at the end of last year, they were like, okay, Madaris is graduating. He's going on to a, to do his thing, um, serve serve a church mission, I believe. And then he was going to go on to college and all that sure. stuff. Like he was planning on doing all that. But then you still had Mike Day and Sawyer Hansen on the roster at the time. These are two, if, for those who are listening, maybe you weren't, I'm going to educate y'all real quick. They had three towers. They always joked around about Middleton having the three towers. Well, then they still had the two towers coming in. But ultimately, Mike Day made a decision to go to a prep school, which is awesome. We talked about him yeah. taking the decision that was best for him. And then Sawyer ended up going to uh, a local school, Eagle, transferring over there, which yeah. left you guys with a little bit less height, so to speak. So yeah. I want to talk to you about that. Obviously, things happen. Kids transfer. They do certain things. They want to do the situation that's best for them. It's one of the, the, the difficult discussions in sports, but it's also, you know, like you got to love – Love them, support them, what they want to do. But now it's time as a coach. We got to figure out what our identity is now. And I want to talk to you about that. What was it like, you know, having to – I want to get the raw details of like, yeah. okay, you lost your guys, but that's okay. We still got dogs that can come in here and play. How did you guys – how did you get the kids to buy in now saying, okay, this is our group now. This is what we're going to be doing. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question. And you hit the nail on the head. Like um, Sawyer and Mike, like we love them. I, I believe and and know, like we have great relationships with both those kids. Um, Sawyer ultimately made a decision that he felt was best for him. Um, we saw him all summer, had conversations with him. Like all his friends are in Middleton. Like, you know, he's at our midnight Madness event watching, like he, we're rooting for him and his success. And the same thing with Michael day, like we don't end up at section seven. If we don't have Michael day on our roster, you know, having a six ten kid, like, we took him to the Great Western Classic. Um, you know, we tried to showcase him the best we could. Um, we probably had six or seven schools that we were in contact with pretty consistently about Michael. I sent out 110 emails um, about him before we went to Section 7 to try to help him in his recruitment. Um, you know, ultimately, ABC Prep, you know, gives him uh, an opportunity that he felt was best as well. So, you know, we're rooting for both those guys. We love both those guys. We also love the current squad we have. Um, it gives some kids some opportunity to step up, which has been fun to see. Um, one kid, for example, Riker Apple, he played uh, played JV last year. He's a big kid, 6'4", uh, pretty good size, pretty good body. In the summer, he didn't get the minutes he wanted. 
Um, you know, he just, they weren't there. But having some kids move, having some things shift, like Riker has taken an opportunity to get in the weight room um, to kind of change up and fix his shot a little bit and kind of battle through and earn, and earn um, a starting role. So it's been unique in the sense of, yeah, we lost some guys. We love them. We miss them. But we've it's allowed some other kids to come in and step up. We're young overall in terms of game minutes. Talmadge Stuckey's back, all-conference guard. He's, he's our only starter that's back. Um, Tate Johansson, I believe he's the leading receiver in the SIC this year. He he is playing. He's back. Um, he did not play last year after playing his sophomore year, so he's going to help us out this year. He'll be a new familiar face, but also a new face uh, to some people at the 5A level. Um, Micah Mendiola and Sawyer Heck played for me last year. They played a bench role. Um, love those two. They grinded all year last year in kind of a bench role, starting their role. Um, dominated every day in practice going up Tyler going up against Tyler and Talmadge and you know Sawyer and my all these kids so they were ready to step in and play some minutes um, then we got a couple sophomores up Blake Bishop um, is up and he'll uh, you know he'll he's a smart kid really high basketball IQ um, and he he's filling a starting role for us right now and Parker Lambert um, another really athletic body um and and some of this youth like they just got to truman stuckey's up with us fisher okamika like and some of it is like they need reps they need minutes like we're going to continue to evolve and change as those guys get more comfortable um you know we did change up some things uh, offensively and defensively with you know personnel we're just different now we don't have the same size we're a little more versatile we have some length we have some athleticism um, so we've made some adjustments there and and we're coming into our own right now. We're figuring some things out. You know, we beat Ridgeview. We were on the road at Highland, um, you know, which is a tough place to play. I played, you know, I went to school at Highland, dropped an overtime game, had our chances to win, had some free throws to win, turned around the next day and played a really tough century team. I played for Ryan Frost and his dad. Um, they're really good, really disciplined. They defend. They lost Harwell, you know, and, and kind of been written off. But Ryan does such a good job with those kids and getting them ready to play. And, and we came out with the win that day. And, you know, tonight we go Nampa, a, a really well-coached team, Skyview and CUNA. So we go two pod games this week. So um, we're kind of seeing kids step up, fill roles. It's a really fun group to coach. Um, obviously, coming up to the 5A level is going to be like it's competitive night in, night out. We're not going to blow anybody out. We're different than we were last year, um, but we're going to come in every night and compete with energy, effort, enthusiasm. Um, you know, we're going to attack people on both ends of the floor and, and, you know, just give it our best shot. Hopefully put these kids in a position to win. No, I'm excited to see this because everything you're saying there, the the public that is used to the old Middleton, well, it's a different Middleton, but that doesn't mean they're a bad Middleton. It's, you got yeah. dogs on the team, and it's just a different philosophy. There's going to be, it's not going to be the exact same system, but you have the dogs that are really ready to go. And I'm looking forward to seeing some of those names you mentioned, like as they get more reps, get more comfortable at the varsity level and the the 5A varsity level, for that matter. It'll be awesome. Now, um, I know it's short. It's it's early into the season, right, Coach? But uh, yeah. What would you say is the biggest difference that you felt from the 4A to the 5A level, if the, if any? I mean, because they always talk about depth. Well, at yeah. least depth in football. I don't know about basketball. So talk to me about that. Have you noticed any differences in depth in the basketball side of things yet? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I played 5A basketball. I coached 5A at Idaho Falls. I was at Idaho Falls for, for uh, four years. We won the state championship at the 4A level, but we also then – I led that transition from 4A to 5A as the interim one year. Um and I do like I think our conference, like the 5A SIC, there's there's a ton of depth. Like I feel like um, at the 4A level, sometimes it gets really top heavy. Um, and the top heavy 4A teams, I, I believe they can compete at the 5A level, you know, just fine. Um, but I feel like that gap between um, not, depending on year, of course, there, you know, there's some teams some years that are just absolutely loaded, but. Um, you know, the top of the 5A and, and the bottom of the 5A, I think it's a more narrow gap. So, I mean, we just keep telling our guys, like, night in, night out, it could go either way. Like, and if you look at the scores from last year and even in the 5A SIC, like, I think Centennial had like a 30-point loss in the district tournament, turns around and ends up in the state championship game. Like, night, it just night in, night out, it was... 
you know, lose by 10. And the next time you play them, win by 10 and lose by eight, then win by six. Like it, it's just a battle every night. It's physical. There's some really good players in Idaho um, that I love to see Idaho guys getting some of that attention. Um, so, yeah, I do. And we haven't hit conference yet. So, you know, maybe some of my thoughts there will change. But from what I've watched, some from the film I have, there's a and, and there's great coaches at the 4A level, great coaches at the 5A level, great teams. Um, but, yeah, we're expecting just fist fights every night. Um, really, you know, you need a couple potential calls to go your way, a couple bounces to go your way. And that ultimately could be the difference on a night in, night out basis. Totally, man. Totally. Now you mentioned some of the names. You pretty much told us all the names of the roster. If you could pick like three names for like people who are just like, okay, here are three hidden gems that you might not know about. You mentioned Tate Johansson coming back. You mentioned Sawyer Heck talked about Talmadge coming back. Like if you pick three names that are like the hidden gems that you're like, okay. And, and why, like you're saying, okay, here are the guys that we need to be watching over at Middleton as they go into these dog fights night in and night out. And why, why are we watching these guys? Yeah, I think Riker Apple's a name to watch. Uh, like I said, he just, man, his his change from the summer to where he's currently at has been huge. Um, he's going to make an impact for us this year and already has through three games. Uh, Micah Mendiola, again, he was on our roster last year, but uh, great baseball player, great basketball player. Um, his mom and dad are both college coaches at the College of Idaho. He gets it. Uh, extremely coachable dude. He's actually rebounding. He had 10 rebounds for us the other night. Um, which is, you know, just huge for us. And um, probably Blake Bishop as an incoming sophomore, like he stepped into a role. He was a uh, eight and 10 the other night. Um, he's starting to figure some things out, getting a little more confident there. Um, and we think all three of those guys are going to kind of, you know, have to step in and play an immediate role and, and have an immediate impact for us. I love it, man. Well, coach, tell us about this. You were at Highland, you know, you yeah. are sorry, you were at Idaho Falls, but you went to school at Highland, all those yep. things. Middleton. I mean, it's kind of out in the middle of its own little, it's its own world. I always talk about Middleton high school as its own world. I'm going to, I got to share a story real quick. A couple yeah, of years good. back, they're playing in the district. I think it was a district championship against BK. This is the year before you got there. And I went there to go, you know, check out the game. This is in the middle of the pandemic, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to be insistent. It's in the middle of the pandemic. And so Middleton just runs, they just do their own. They just call their own shots out there. I love it. Like we got one half of the stadiums, like six feet apart from each other. And then the other half it's Middleton, dude. They're just, they, they, they call their own shots. That community just has their own set of rules. And I actually, I'm all for it. Some people might not like it. I'm all for it. I think it's, it's an interesting community. And I'm like, you know what? Good for them. Cause it's like five miles down the road, whole new, it's like a different country over here. So you know, it's 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 great, but I just want to know, like, what was uh, what has been your experience thus far? Obviously, we're probably not going to badmouth your own community, yeah. but like, what what's the 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 experience been like so far, transitioning from like Idaho Falls, Eastern Idaho, over yeah. to to Middleton? Yeah, I think the biggest difference, like being in being at Highland, playing there, you know, there's Pokey and Century. Being in Idaho Falls, you got Thunder Ridge, Skyline, Hillcrest, Bonneville. One thing that I love about Middleton is it's a one town school. Um, and I think that's an advantage for us. And I love like this, this community is extremely passionate. They love their basketball. They get behind you. They support, uh, they donate, they show up to the jamboree. They show up to midnight madness. Um, the fire department, you know, puts on their sign Middleton midnight madness, come meet the team. Like, I feel like it's just a tight knit, um, community that loves each other, that supports each other. There's one school. Uh, so we're all going to school there. Um, and it's been great. Like administration has been great. The community has been phenomenal. Um, high expectations, which, um, you know, you wouldn't want it any other way. Right. You don't. I mean, walking into a situation with no expectations versus high expectations, like there's pros and cons there to each situation. Um, but there's a high standard of excellence at Middleton. Um, and I think ultimately that's a good thing. Um, And I think that, you know, that can set Middleton apart. So it's been great so far. Very welcoming, uh, very passionate and and really fun to be a part of. You know, it's you make a great point, though, coach. Like I'm as you're sitting there talking about it. That's like that's a big reason that community rallies behind their school. It's not that small of a town. Like people are like, oh, Middleton's tight. No, no, actually, Middleton's huge now. It used to be. We used to make fun of Middleton when I was younger. I'm, I'm born and raised a Meridian. I'm a Meridian alum out here, like never got out of the Treasure Valley. But like. Now Middleton's like a big city. So, but the thing is, yeah. they've got one school. Like you said, like up north, you got Lake City and Coeur d'Alene literally five minutes apiece from each other. And then here yeah. in, in the valley, right? I've got literally where I live, I've got Ridgeview High School a mile and a half from my house here. 
Owyhee a mile and a half. I'm literally in the middle of both of them. Owyhee yeah. High School. Then right down the road, you got Rocky. Then you got Meridian. Then you got Mountain View, not too far from there. Yeah. And then you've got Eagle just down the street a little bit. Yeah. So within a, about a 15 minute drive, you can hit five or six different high schools. Um, and then I could go the other direction yeah. south and go to Nampa. I got Nampa and Skyview about 15 minutes away from my house too. So it's like, dude, we've got all yeah. these schools around us. Middleton though does it's their one school in the one town, and that is why they have such a good community. I mean, it's I'm sure there's pressure there. Like yeah. said, there's high expectations, but that's not a bad thing, right? Yes. It's not always a bad thing. Yeah, that's fine. And coming from the east, it was it was Rigby and Madison, like still close, you know, close to each other, but um, a one school town. And I always felt like that that kind of set those schools apart. They had great attendance. Um, they had phenomenal support. Um, allegiances weren't split between. Well, I live between, you know, Ridgeview and Nampa, and I kind of go both ways. I went to school here, but I donate money here like it just is a it's a one-stop shop um you can rally everybody together um and that's been a fun experience i've, I've really enjoyed that aspect of middleton heck yeah man heck yeah that's so yeah. awesome so so coach you talked about a couple of things with your team you, you've mentioned yeah. the, the hidden gems and the guys we need to be looking out for you've mentioned the names of the players so we know who they are you've said that you guys are going to play hard on both sides of the floor what is your biggest strength as a team? What what can we expect? Like, what is the biggest strength? Is it defense? Is it rebounding? Is it actually shooting? Are you guys solid shooters? Tell us what the biggest yeah. strength is for Middleton. Yeah, right now we're playing pretty well defensively. Um, you know, we we play a defensive philosophy um, that's probably different than than a lot of teams play. Um, I got to spend time this summer um, with Mark Adams, the head coach at Texas Tech, and kind of talk about his philosophy and what he does. Um, you know, kind of feet, like we've gotten way more detailed than we were last year coming in into year one, like our feet positioning, um, where we're helping from, uh, where we're covering down from, how we're defending the ball, how we're defending ball screens. Um, so early season, like we're playing pretty well defensively and that's kind of what you expect, right? We, some of the offense comes, um, we're in year two of our offensive system. We play, we play a hybrid system. Um, we take a lot of NBA principles. I work for um nba player development coach phil beckner so like we we i spend time with him i break down film with him so like we've taken some concepts some hybrid systems some princeton principles um with also some flow and delay principles in the five out you know in a five out setting so year two offensively i think we're making strides we've been able to add more action we feel more comfortable in our action and we've been able to add more pace to our action defensively um we're more versatile in the sense of i think we can switch you know we can switch one through five at times um we can get into a hedge and recover if we need to be in that situation um you know we've grabbed some and added some different principles we'll throw out some zone this year which we didn't do much last year um so year two has kind of allowed us um to add more um i think defensively is an early season strength for us right now um, and our offense is coming along, you know, 57, 57, and we were 50 at century. So we're scoring the ball. We've got some versatile scores. We're long. We have some athleticism on the defensive end. And I think our guys on the offensive end have a high basketball IQ, which helps us a lot. Heck yeah, man. That's super cool. Some of those field back. Okay. You need to get him in contact with me for the game time guru podcast. I need to get some, like some big time interviews over there for GTG stuff. Cause that's, that's wild, but that's cool that you have, you have a lot of mentors now, coach, do you still have your website that you, you have open with your, like, I think yeah. you had a blog on there and stuff. Like, yep. I do have a website. Yeah. Coach Nate Hartman.com um, coach to lead. It kind of just embodies my philosophy a little bit. Like I call Middleton a player development program. Um, some people might, you know, well, what gives you, why do you call it that? What gives you that authority? How can you say that? But I mean, my overall goal for the program that we run is coach players and build leaders. At some point, the basketball is going to stop bouncing, whether it's their senior year of high school, whether they go to four years of college, you know, whether they're lucky enough to go on and play after that. At some point, the ball is going to stop bouncing. They're going to go to college. They're going to have roommates. They're going to get hired and have a job. They're going to get told no for a job. They're going to get told no for a promotion. Like they've got to work together as a team in an office setting. So we're constantly trying to work with these guys on the player, obviously on the court, but also off the court and try to work with these guys through lessons. So for example, this summer I went down to Phoenix, I went to Phil Beckner's coach's clinic. I got the opportunity to stay at his house. 
Um, like he's, he works for the 76ers. He's a player development consultant for the Sixers. He's there 10 days of the month working with, you know, directly with their team, Doc Rivers, Embiid, Tobias Harris, all those guys. Um, and then he, you know, he still trains Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons just signed a hundred million dollar deal. That's one of his guys. Um, he's got this, you know, he, he consults Texas tech basketball, Utah basketball, like he's so connected. And I've been lucky to spend time with him, be mentored by him, not work for him. I got to stay at his house this summer. Um, but Will Wade was also at this clinic, the former coach at LSU. He was also at BCU in Chattanooga. And Will Wade talked about um, a culture code that LSU basketball had. So he gave this presentation about this culture code, this pillars, and gave us all that. I mean, LSU was extremely successful under Will Wade. They won a ton of games. I think they were the, they won more games than Kentucky. Like they were the, the leading uh, win percentage during his tenure at LSU in the SEC. And he shared this culture code. So I spent some time with him during that week, like asking him questions. Um, and long story short, we put together this Middleton basketball culture code. And I wish we would have had it last year. We didn't quite have it. You know, we didn't have it right. But it's been rolled out this year. Um, our athletes and our parents signed it. Um, we've got four pillars that we hit every day. And these are things that we believe will develop them on and off the floor. Like we believe that's what player development is. Like we spend 15 to 20 minutes every day on weekend development, on footwork, um, on change pace, change direction, and our shooting actions. Like we're developing dudes on the court. But we also believe as part of that philosophy, like we're trying to get these guys better in the classroom and um, as brothers and sisters. And, and eventually they'll be parents and have their own kids and, and they'll work in the workplace. And they're the future leaders of what we need. Like we need them to be you in the future, running podcasts and helping the sport grow. Like we need these guys to be coaches and to help these young athletes continue to grow. So through doing all this, through working with Phil, like I've just found that my my burden in life, my leadership calling is to serve others through the game of basketball. And that means, you know, doing it on the floor, um, but it also means doing it off the floor. And we believe these things like, is it going to win us every game? No, but I, we truly believe as a staff, like these things and this time that we put in this culture code, the skill development, like it's you know, it might win us one or two more games during the season, but the impact that it'll have on these kids' life will last them a lifetime. Like, I get texts from kids at Idaho Falls. We won the state championship in 1819. Like, I still get messages from them. Like, some of them are getting married. A um, couple of them are playing college baseball. And, and you still get a message of, hey, you know what, coach, you remember this about that season? Or one texted me the other day and was like, what book rec recommendations do you have for me? You know, you see some books behind me, like they knew that I love to read and, and we shared those things with them and we talked to them about them. And, and that just meant, that just means so much when you hear back from a player on the impact you had. So we're, we're constantly trying to impact lives. Obviously we want to win games. Um, I, I take the win loss thing way too hard. Um, it's my weakness as a coach. It's where I'm vulnerable. You know, it's hard. Uh, but there's a burden to leadership that that extends beyond the floor. So we believe and, and we try to develop the player as a whole on and off the court. I dig that, man. I dig it a ton. I uh, encourage everybody to go check out uh, coachnatehartman.com yeah. to, to check out his website and kind of see what, you know, your philosophies are and, 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 and kind of learn a little bit more about you and just like the whole leadership aspect and player development yeah. aspect. I think that's awesome that you guys have, you know, implemented that into, into Middleton basketball. I, I want to ask you one more question. I, I was, I want to piggyback off what you just said. What book recommendations would you have for us? What's, what's the best book you've read in the last, I guess, six months? The best book I have ever read. And I read it once a year is how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, like just incredible. Um, you talk about, and, it, and it's exactly what it is like winning, winning and influencing, like, how can you, be a better leader. And I think a lot of it comes down to like, I have a master's in organizational leadership. I've studied it. Um, I've spent time, like another mentor of mine is George Raveling, like Hall of Famer, um, the first African-American coach in the pack. I think it was the pack eight at the time at Washington State, coached at Iowa, played at Villanova. He was on stage with Dr. King, has the original I Have a Dream speech. Like he's been so influential in my life with um, challenging me to read and 
I met with him six years ago um, in Los Angeles and he challenged me. I wasn't in coaching at the time. I had coached one year, was trying to get back to it, um, knew it was a calling and a burden of mine. And, and he challenged me, you know, to get back into it. And he also challenged me to take a topic and study one topic for a year straight. And so I've done that with leadership, but I've done it for six years now. I, I pursued a master's degree in it. I just became obsessed with like, how can we, how can I impact people? How can I lead people? Um, and I think ultimately like my style kind of falls under that authentic leadership style, but also I think one of the most effective styles is to be a servant leader. Um, you know, obviously the greatest leader to ever walk the earth was Jesus and he was a servant leader. Like he served people. We don't like, we still talk about him thousands and thousands and thousands of years later because he was a servant leader. Um, so I try to find leadership books. I love how to win friends and influence people. Atomic Habits is another great book by James Clear. Um, you know, just, there's just some phenomenal books out there and some, and some teaching opportunities that we have to dive into and, and take away and learn. And those are two that I suggest to everybody. Um, the, the Jocko Willink and Leif Babin books are phenomenal in terms of leadership, extreme ownership. And, um, gosh, the other ones I'm blanking on the other name. Um, but yeah, there's, there's some great books and I have a book club. I have a coach to lead book club. Um, it's up on my website, um, under leadership and motivation. And, and I think I'm actually a little bit behind basketball season's gotten busy. I've been working with Phil a little bit and, and gotten a little behind, but I try to post about a book that I've read on a monthly basis, give a short recap on it. And, and, you know, I have a little Slack channel with four or five people that are part of that book club. So, you know, the more the merrier, if we can get in that and, and we don't read the same book, it's, I like, Hey, let's read one book a month. Let's read something different. And Shane jumps in and shares what book he read and some insights from it. I scan through those and say, Hey, that looks like a great book. I'm going to pick that one up. Or, you know, I, I see, you know, Hey, there's some points from that book, some quick takeaways. I'm not going to read that one but I kind of just got a quick summary on it. Uh, Personality Isn't Permanent by Benjamin Hardy is really, really good uh, that I read recently. The Big Leap um, is another really good one, like just changing your mindset to an abundance mindset and raising that level of what you think is possible. Um, I'm big into visualization, like meditation, like trying to work on some of that subconscious thinking. Um, I love things that challenge my way of thinking. Like Phil Beckner challenges, challenges the way I think constantly. George Raveling challenges the way I think constantly. Um, and that's fun. Like you got to think about things. You know, you have people push you, challenge you. You and I grew up in Idaho. Sometimes you get caught in some of the just cultural, like this is who we are. This is what we do. So it's fun. And you probably get that talking to so many guests. You know, you hear so many different insights and lessons and takeaways and people that grew up differently than us. And learning about their leadership journey and their burden and their calling. And and that stuff's powerful. And I think, you know, we need to share more of that stuff. I dig that, man. I'm going to tell you, I'm not a huge reader. I've become more of one as I've gotten older, you know, I'm 34 now, but um, (laughs) how to win friends and influence people is a phenomenal book. I actually have read that one (laughs) extreme ownership. I've got it on my thing here. I've read that one. Our, our, where I work for click funnels, which is a, entrepreneurship company we i'm a okay. manager over there so our we work with entrepreneurs yeah. all day so i get to i get to learn from tons and tons of people so um oh that dichotomy, i just looked up it's that dichotomy of leadership is the dichotomy other book. Of leadership yeah ah, dude, I really, like good. Like, really good and obviously the military does things you know on a different level than, yeah. than what we're accustomed to so those are really fun to dive into and influence people. I keep glitching out just a little bit here, but no, I appreciate you uh, sharing that. And I appreciate you taking the time coach to, to talk to us yep. about Middleton basketball, letting us know a little bit more about your program. We're looking forward to, to highlighting you guys and seeing more of what you guys do throughout the year. Hopefully we'll be able to get some of the coverage of you guys' games. Um, and I, I encourage everybody out there. I mean, the, the coverage of the state of Idaho, just so everybody knows, like we've got, we've got coverage around, but like, it's hard for everybody to like get to every game, right? I've got a wife and three kids and I've got three businesses I'm running on top of of working a full-time job. So I've said it before. I'm not trying to like do a sad story, but if you guys want to get coverage of things, 
give us some, you know, hit us up and let us know who's a good, good content creator. If somebody wants to get out there and get some Middleton coverage and we can help them get some exposure too, yeah. uh, let us know. Like we want to get all this coverage out there so that we can get more and more people out there. So hit us up and, and let us know if you want to work with the network, but we're looking forward to seeing you coach. And uh, I just want to say thanks again for joining gym session, man. We appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me. You're the man. You the man, brother. And we'll talk to you next time. All right. Take care, guys.